Hi, everyone. Welcome to me and Sagar's talk on Skip Rocks and Files, Turbocharged Trino Queries with Hoodie's Multimodal Indexing Subsystem. Optimizing data access and query performance is critical to building low latency application. So in this talk, we'll go over some of the bottlenecks of Lake House technologies that you should consider when you want to build large scale applications and how Hoodie helps enable faster analytics on data platforms with petabyte and exabyte scale data. Sagar, do you want to go ahead and give an intro? Sure. Hi, folks. I'm Sagar. I'm an Apache Hoodie committer and a software engineer at One House. Before One House, I worked uh, with a team that built Amazon Aurora and Oracle Golden Gate. Uh, pretty much, I've been working on distributed data systems uh, throughout my career. Over to you, Nadine. Um, so I'm Nadine. I'm leading One House's developer initiatives, and I'm also an Apache Hoodie contributor. I'm passionate about bridging engineering, product, and marketing to help drive product adoption. So I previously led Rockset's developer initiatives, focusing on building technical content and driving developer adoption um, for real-time analytics. And at Bose, I contributed to the WatchOS SDK and worked with partners to embrace spatial audio in the gaming and uh, music industries. So for this agenda in this talk, we'll go over some of the bottlenecks you may encounter when working with large scale applications. Then I'll pass it to Sagar to talk about how multimodal indexing and the metadata will work in Hoodie. Sagar also worked on the Trino and Hoodie integration. So I'll also cover how Trino unlocks, becomes supercharged and unlocks literally magnitudes faster queries um, by leveraging Hoodie's metadata table and multimodal indexing. And then finally, We'll wrap up with the roadmap and community, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. So let's talk about the challenges of writing querying data at low latency with data lakes. So the, as the need for data-driven insights continues to grow, so does the demand for efficient data processing at scale. Many challenges exist for lake house technologies when it comes to ingesting, processing, and analyzing massive amounts of data. So traditional approaches often lack you know, index support, leading to slow and resource intensive full table scans, especially at, at a, a petabyte and exabyte uh, scale. So full table scans involves reading and processing every record or row in a table without using any optimization techniques like indexing. So now you can imagine that doing these processes at scale at this level is super, super hard. So let's take a look at an architectural diagram of how data is ingested, processed, and queried within a lake house. So typically, you'll be working with all kinds of sources, including streaming sources. And data will be stored typically into an object store like S3. And on top of that, you'll have some sort of table format like Hoodie. For from there, you'll use a query engine to query the data and, and get the results to, uh, from the query to, to do some analysis. Why use a lake house? Why not just you know put the data and query it through uh, an object store like S3? Well, object stores are basically immutable stores that don't provide any ASP guarantees or built-in support for you know schema enforcement or indexing or even provide ways to have efficient query. You can think of a lake house as bringing data warehouse capabilities to the data lake. So in addition to being able to store petabyte and exabyte data pretty easily within you know, an object store, when you, um, when you use a, a lake house format, now you have asset guarantees and other features depending on the support provided by that lake house technology. But not all lake houses are created equally. Just like databases, each lake house technology has their features, services, and ecosystem in which they consume and send um, data to. So this brings us to um, some of the bottlenecks to talk about uh, <clears throat> with some lake houses and how they process and manage data. So when you're building these large data applications, bottlenecks are inevitable. As some of us know, it will require tons of time and resources to fix and optimize. So from the get-go, it's important to identify you know, some SLAs you'll need for your product and the types of features and services you'll need in order to efficiently and effectively scale. So in this first highlight box I have here, one of the main important features to consider is indexing. Write indexes provide a mechanism to efficiently locate the position of where new data should be inserted and updated in a database. And by maintaining an index structure, you optimize for certain write operations like upserts. 
And the database engine can quickly identify the appropriate location and minimize the time required for modifying the data. This results in faster you know, writes as well as reducing the latency and improving the overall system responsiveness within your, your infrastructure. And the second highlighted box, now we're going to talk about the services to consider um, that you might want to consider when you're building a lake house uh, platform. So services to consider that not all lake houses provide is automated table services where you can automatically cluster, clean, compact, and perform metadata indexing and much more. Typically, some of the table services are actually passed to the users to be run manually. So for example, it's up to the users to coordinate and orchestrate the services alongside the ingestion pipeline. And this is a big operational overhead. The other thing you might want to consider is to avoid full table scans on large data sets because at scale, this is inefficient. So most lake house technologies don't have a way to incrementally update the data set and query only just the changes. And this leads to slower and more expensive analytics. But Hoodie is a little bit different, especially when it comes to Trino. So Hoodie, well, we're gonna talk a little bit about Hoodie. So Hoodie is a little different in, 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 and is optimized from the ground up to handle petabyte and exabyte scale data. So for example, one of the ways is when data is ingested, Bloom index are automatically placed at the footer, at the footer of the parquet files. So when you scan the file, Hoodie checks to see if a key may exist in that file. And you can opt out from using the default of Bloom index by choosing other index types like simple index or bucket index and so on. Once data, um, once data is in, um, let's see, there we go. Oops. Once, yeah, there we go. Once data is inside Hoodie, it automatically coordinates and orchestrates different services such as clustering and, and cleaning alongside the ingestion pipeline. And when updates and deletes happen, as they typically will when you work with streaming sources or CDC, Hoodie performs role level changes, avoiding rewrites of the whole table. And on the read side with Trino, um, you can query just those incremental changes if you want. So part of building compute efficient apps is having a lake house that can efficiently ingest, process, and manage data. Efficiency also comes with querying data as well. If you can avoid reading you know, unnecessary files at, at, at terabytes, petabytes, and, and exabyte scale, well, why not? You get faster analytics. In particular, Trino is able to do this and get magnitudes faster queries because of Hoodie's table services. One of Hoodie's table services called uh, metadata indexing. But before we dive into this topic, let's get a bird's eye view of, the, of Hoodie's platform. So <clears throat> Hoodie is not just a table format. And I say this really slowly because it's actually a platform. Hoodie has many features and services to ensure you get write and read optimization. At the bottom over here, you have the lake storage of where you'll store the data. And on top of that, you have the data format you'll use like a Parquet or Algro. Then on the next section, you on the, the, the blue, dark blue box, you have the transactional uh, database layer. This is where a lot of the services are provided that Hoodie provides to your data. So you can do indexing, you have concurrency control. We talked a little bit about the table services. And then once the data is ingested and managed on the type, you have the execution and runtimes. And this is where uh, Trino can integrate with Hoodie to, to query the data. So to come full circle on what we talked about and, and how it relates to Hoodie's platform, um, one of the table services we're going to double click into is, is the metadata indexing and the metadata table, which is part of the transactional database layer. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Trino, which comes on the top layer, which is the execution and runtimes. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit about Hoodie's table format, and I'll tie it into a little bit with the metadata table. So a hoodie table consists of file slices, and each slice contains of a base file, which is a dark, a dark parquet file produced at certain commits or action times. And uh, depending on the table type you're using, there might be a log file, which is an Avro format that contains inserts and updates to the base file since the base file was produced. So to, to, to go back a little bit, hoodie has two different table types, a copy on write table and a merge on read table. I'm going to double click into the merge on retable in the next slide, but I just wanted to say that as an overview. So a group of file slices, which you see here in the light uh, blue box and the light pink box, is also uh, known as a file group. 
And when a write comes in, the records are written to the file sizes. Now, each record has a key that is mapped to a particular file group. So a group of these file sizes is that file group, which is in the bottom on the top half of the diagram. Um, <clears throat> and Hoodie you know, checks the record to see if it, it exists in that file group. So if it does, then, the up, then um, that file size gets the update depending on where the record is located. And the different file sizes of a particular file group correspond to different versions of the data, which unlocks multi-version concurrency control. So let's talk about the advantages of having this particular file layout. From the right side, if you have multiple table services running in the background alongside with ingestion, the services don't block each other because the multi-version concurrency because of the multi-version concurrency control in Hitty. Now on the read side, the file layout facilitates the query engine like Trino to be able to query a data at a particular point in time. And this brings up this bring this now brings us to the second half of the diagram, which is point number two, which is under the commit action to timeline. So on the bottom half of part two, when a record gets written into a file group, Hoodie's timeline also records a commit action that was done in the timeline. The timeline is in a dot hoodie folder and essentially an event log. There are different commit actions that you can have, such as you know, clustering or a delta commit or even a rollback. But a key point, a key thing to point out in the hoodie timeline is that there are time types associated with every commit action, along with some metadata about what was committed. Now, following the timeline and the next light blue blocks in the second half of the diagram, you have the metadata table. Now, the metadata table is structurally different from the timeline in that it's an internal merge on read table and a hoodie data table. So the metadata table is where each partition stores information about the metadata of the file. So for example, you might have a column stats partition, which will store information about the min and max uh, values of uh, the comms min max values, the null counts, and so on. And the metadata table also stores files partition, which stores information about where files are located and within which partition are they located at. Now, the metadata table is a central place for all of the metadata. So for example, earlier in a couple slides ago, I mentioned that when writes occur to a hoodie table, hoodie automatically um, applies a bloom index to the footer of the parquet file. Additionally, the metadata table also stores the bloom index from all the files. So instead of opening and closing to see you know, if a record may exist in a file group, and you know, opening and closing the parquet files, Hoodie can just check the metadata table directly and save on the file I.O. cost. So when a commit happens, the meta table gets equally updated as well, so it's in sync with what's happening. You can think of the metadata table as an index, and you, when you create an index and, an, and you get an update, the index is updated. So you can think of a metadata table as, like, uh, as a big index as well. So now, Earlier, I, I mentioned that there are two table types with Hoodie, a copy on write table, which is also known as a COW table, and a merge on read table, which is also known as an MR table. Copy on write tables have a simpler file structure, so I won't mention copy on write here. I'll mention, I'll mention the differences with copy on write in line as I'm talking about the merge on read or MOR, MOR file structure, which is this slide here. So in this slide, we're double clicking into what a file group looks like for an MOR table. So to recap, each, uh, each file group contains multiple file sizes, and now we're double clicking into these file sizes. So for MOR, table, uh, MOR tables, each file size contains a base file, which you see in the dark blue box here at T1, and also um, multiple log files. And, and inside the, uh, the log files, there are, there are data blocks. So now each, uh, so basically each log file contains multiple data blocks. So a data block stores data when each commit or write occurs. And this structure is ideal for streaming sources because the write amplification is zero. And the reason being is that there's no synchronous merges happening at write time. Hoodie automatically creates these data blocks when, um, when the writes come in. Now this is different with COW tables because the synchronous merges ha uh, happen at write time. Um, and so this is why CO, uh, this is why COW tables just contain the base files, and also the COW tables have a higher write amplification. But how do these logs for MRR tables? How do these log files get merged into a base file? Well, this is through a service that Hoodie offers, which is called Compaction. So during Compaction, Hoodie orchestrates and compacts these log files 
forming a new version of the base file. And then in diagram, we have the example with base file B prime at T5. And when new writes happen after a compaction has been done, it gets written into these blocks, multiple, uh, multiple blocks consist of a log file. And again, once compaction is triggered, now you'll form a new file, which is B double prime, which is not shown in the slide, and the cycle continues. And on the bottom, we have the timeline, so T1, T2, T3, that records different commit actions and state at, at some point in time when they occur. So to recap in this section, we've had an overview of some of the bottlenecks when building uh, applications that need to scale and what efficiency may look like. Then we went over the features and services that Hoodie offers. We got a closer look at the file layout in Hoodie and how the timeline and metadata play a role in Hoodie's architecture. So now I'll pass it to Sagar to talk about the challenges of writing and querying data at low latency with data lakes. Sagar? Thanks, Nadi. All right, so let me begin with uh, the basics um, of uh, a query life cycle. What are the factors affecting the query performance? Uh, in order to understand that, we need to uh, understand the different stages that a query goes through. Um, irrespective of the query engine, it needs to uh, fetch some metadata in order to plan the query better. And then uh, every query engine will have its own uh, nuances on top of it. Uh, there will be optimizations based on certain heuristics. And then execution itself could be, uh, for example, certain engines might do query compilation and code generation while certain others might do vectorized reading. Uh, then ultimately the data has to be scanned. Um, so the tables have to be read. And uh, that's where, uh, especially in MPP architectures, uh, the shuffle or data shuffle between workers, uh, that could also affect the speed of SQL. Uh, one of the design goals for Huri is to be interoperable with uh, different query engines. And uh, that's why the most important step uh, from the point of view of uh, querying a Huri table uh, is uh, the metadata fetch, uh, which, which uh, kind of decides what, what's the amount of data that needs to be scanned. And that directly affects your query latency. Uh, next slide, please. So um, fetching the metadata data is key to improving the query performance. Um, and that's where the indexing subsystem comes into play. Well, indexes are nothing new to Hoodie. Any, anyone from a traditional database uh, world uh, uh, is familiar with it. Um, it's uh, essentially pointing uh, to your data in a more optimized uh, way. And uh, with Hoodie, you can have coarse grained indexes like Bloom filters or fine grained indexes uh, such as record level index. Um, and Hoodie employs these index uh, for different purposes, uh, both during, uh, they are utilized both at the write path and as well as the read path. Um, so why, why do we call it multimodal indexing? Uh, because uh, it can support different types of indexes such as files, column stats, Bloom index uh, or record level index, and why we call it a subsystem because it's a separate component um, inside the Hudi platform. And just like databases, you can concurrently uh, build your indexes without really blocking the ingestion. So your, your pipeline, main pipeline, can be running uh, as is. You don't need to stop that and uh, keep uh, uh, while your index is being built in the back background. Um, next slide, please. So I want to talk about uh, two key design choices um, uh, for, for the indexes. First is where to store these indexes, uh, what kind of file format to choose. Uh, open source table formats such as uh, Delta Lake or um, uh, Iceberg, uh, they use uh, Parquet or Avro. Uh, but what do we want out of uh, index? Uh, uh, so we want um, something that is suited for point lookups, right? And uh, that's where, uh, um, compared to Avro and Parquet, uh, HFile does a lot better. HFile 
um, has this sorted uh, tree map kind of uh, or sorted key value uh, structure. Um, so uh, point lookups are very, very fast with uh, H5. Uh, as you can see from this uh, benchmark, um, uh, uh, there is 10x to 100x speed up uh, with H5 compared to Parquet or Avro. The second design choice that I want to talk about is about the key format itself. Um, how, how when when you're storing uh, indexes, uh, what's your key format specifically relating to column stats? Um, can we go to the next slide? So these. Uh, 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 again, uh, the question that we asked uh, was, um, all right, what do we want out of uh, uh, the column stats index? Uh, we, do, uh, we want to be able to uh, perform prefix lookups, do uh, range reads, and uh, prune out some data, right? Uh, so the key is composed here by combining the column name, uh, the partition name, and the file name. And how it helps us, uh, your table could have uh, hundreds or thousands of columns, all right? Uh, but at any point in time, you are only querying a, a handful of columns. Your query predicates uh, is only going to have a few handful of columns, right? So uh, if the, the way we structure the key, uh, the number of entries to look up in the column start index it grows up by order of uh, big O of number of columns in the query instead of number of columns in the table. Um, uh, so uh, let's say you're, you have some query like uh, uh, select some columns uh, with some predicates uh, on uh, uh, three columns. Um, uh, uh, your table could have thousands of columns. But your query isn't uh, query latency is gonna be is not gonna be affected by the number of columns on the table. It's uh, uh, the predicates are used to construct the prefix lookup to the column stats index uh, without really having to provide the compute record keys. All right, so now let's uh, move on to the how, how we use all of this uh, within the Trino Hoodie connector. Uh, at a very high level, uh, the High-level design is very similar to any other connector. On top of storage, we have Hudi metadata, which is synced to Hive Metastore. Um, and uh, Trino Coordinator fetches that metadata. Specifically, the split manager uses it and then generates the splits, which are further processed by workers, right? Uh, uh, but uh, the union of Hudi and Trino, uh, uh, the technical strengths of each of these two uh, softwares. Um, so Hoodie, as Nadine talked about, the concept of file group and file slices. Um, Hoodie provides rich set of file system view APIs through which you can uh, look back at any point in time. And uh, it has very fast uh, merge APIs. Um, you can combine base files, log files uh, with minimal latency. And then, of course, the metadata indexes that are used for data skipping, which we'll look into in, in a short while. And on the other hand, Trino is a highly scalable distributed query engine. And uh, 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 I must say this, what goes a little unappreciated um, uh, in many times, I have come across uh, uh, various discussions. We all talk about how fast Trino is, uh, but we don't talk often about how beautiful its uh, the rich set of connector SPIs are, which makes the um, which makes writing any new connector uh, very very easy. Um, next slide, please. So let's talk about uh, data skipping. Right? How 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 do we uh, actually use those metadata indexes for data skipping within the Hoodie connector? Uh, it's kind of two level skipping. Uh, we use the files index to prune the partitions. And then once uh, it's uh, decided that what all partition need to be scanned, within those partition, uh, column stats is further used to skip the data. Um, right now, that's, uh, this is an active PR, uh, which we expect to land soon. Um, the overall design is something like this. 
So we hooked up Kudi file scripting manager with the split manager. Split manager holds the domain of columns essentially from your query predicates. Um, and then skipping manager uses that to send a request to the metadata reader uh, of Hudi, uh, which uh, reads the metadata table. It will only uh, uh, select candidate entries. And uh, further, the splits are generated based on that, which are then processed by the workers. Um, let's say, uh, let's take an example here. You have uh, two queries. Um, the first query where you want to select uh, some columns from a table where C1 less than 10 and your partition column is equal to P1. Uh, what's going to happen is metadata reader will see that, okay, the uh, data blocks that I need to and uh, let me remind you that but at this point of time, it has um, the files index. Uh, from the files index, we already know that uh, we only need to scan the um, blocks corresponding to partition P1. Now, for the column C1, in those data blocks, we have min max for each file. Uh, in, from the diagram, uh, it's files F1 and F2. Depending on those min max values, um, uh, the metadata reader will return results and then it's decided whether uh, f1 needs to be scanned or f2 needs to be scanned or both right um so similarly it goes for the second uh, query as well uh, uh, that's how the column stats index uh, helps us in pruning the uh, or rather skipping the data next slide please we ran a benchmark uh, with this uh, on a GitHub archive data set for uh, uh, GitHub archive of last six months. Uh, it's about 220 GB, 450 million records. Not a very big data set, but uh, good enough to uh, iterate quickly and show reproducible results. Um, I'll summarize the plots here. So the blue columns that you have, blue, blue uh, bars that you see here it's the baseline without any layout optimization. Uh, there are two plots. One shows the query latency itself. The other shows how much data was scanned for the query. Um, and then the red bar indicates uh, linear sorting, while um, uh, linear sorting is simply sorting by one column. Uh, and uh, then the yellow indicates uh, Z order. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's an advanced optimization technique based on space filling curves. Um, so uh, uh, there's no surprise that uh, without uh, any optimization, of course, you'll have higher query latency and you'll scan maximum amount of data. Uh, the interesting bit is if your query has uh, multiple columns in the predicate, um, not just one column, you're not querying just by one primary column, but you have, uh, uh, a few columns in the predicate. Uh, and if your data is uh, laid out by Z order, uh, then your uh, amount of data scanned uh, reduces drastically. Um, so uh, we have uh, uh, run this benchmark on star schema benchmark as well. And uh, we see similar results there too. Um, so th that's how uh, Trino, uh, Trino Hoodie connector uh, uses the multimodal index uh, in Hoodie, uh, which resides inside the Hoodie table base path itself. It's it's an internal Hoodie metadata uh, table, um, and uh, helps your uh, Trino queries for the Hoodie table uh, to run faster. Um, next slide, please. That's it for the roadmap and community. I'll hand over to Nadine. All right, so we'll double click on what's coming up with the roadmap. <clears throat> so we have, uh, we're have we working on first class support with CDC data for incremental queries. The record lev uh, level index is also on the way for better, um, uh, performs better for random updates. Then there's a new table merge APIs for easier reader writer integrations. And then finally, we have the write support and hoodie connector for uh, optimization and storage layout. If you uh, want to refer to the re resources based on my talk, we have some links here. There'll be good references. Um, and then finally, the Hoodie community is uh, buzzing. 
Uh, we have we have support with multiple club providers, and it's a very large and diverse community consisting of contributors, committers from various organizations, and um, who are helping to make Hoodie a little bit better each day. Um, to join the Slack community, you can scan the QR code and nav or navigate to hoodie.apache.org. Um, you can go to the link under community and you'll find some resources there. If you like and use Hoodie, don't be shy and definitely give us a GitHub star. We also host weekly office hours at Thursdays at 8 a.m. PT. If you have more questions after this talk or want to learn more, um, feel free to drop on by. And again, all of that is available on hoodie.apache.org. And um, we have uh, we have some time for Q and A, so we're happy to take them now. Thank you so much for this great presentation. It's really enlightening to, to see how Udi takes it way beyond the table format and adds all these performance con considerations and like makes it a larger platform. It's really cool. Thank you so much. It was a great presentation. <laughs>